Hi, miscellaneous hair. This is where I take you to see offbeat and interesting tourist attractions. Today I have been to St Agnes, which is one of the islands that makes up the Isles of Scilly, and I've crossed over the Tombolo to Goo. Don't forget to like, don't forget to follow. Come on, take a walk with me. St Agnes was the off-island I was looking forward to visiting the most, as it's a place I perceive to be the most desolate and remote of the inhabited Isles of Scilly Islands, and it's the most southern part of the United Kingdom. Yes, I wasn't wrong, but that doesn't mean that St Agnes is without any kind of civilization. Just for reference, St Agnes and Goo are the reddish colour blobs on my map of the Isles of Scilly here. I arrived on Porth Conga Key and this island has just the one key. I'm afraid I've told you a little bit of a fib again. I promised you a video, but most of my recording came out as rather naff. So I'm going to do a photo montage for you instead. Just to reiterate, I've been to the Isles of Scilly three times, once for a day trip, twice for a holiday. Most of these photos come from my second trip, with a few I've managed to salvage from my third trip recently. The Turk's Head is the only pub on the island and is literally a minute's walk from the quay. St Agnes is commonly known as just Agnes to the locals, although it is sometimes affectionately referred to as Aggie. I've been on St Agnes twice, the first time travelling solo, the second time with my Super Dean. The Turk's Head was opened in 1972, although a previous incarnation on the site dates back to 1939. I especially wanted to cross over to Goo, which is reached by a tombolo, a kind of sandbar, a natural isthmus created by tidal deposits. The tide was on its way out, having been high enough to cut Goo off from St Agnes about an hour and a half earlier. Remember, the Isles of Scilly are totally governed by the tides and the weather. Standing on the sand, and at least I'd bother to use my common sense and check out the tide times. A group in front of me evidently hadn't, so I had to educate them as they seemed concerned that the tide was rising. Here I am planning to navigate my way across the Tombolo, and you can see the two parts of the sea meeting. Out of a total Salonian population of 2,270 people, 85 live on St Agnes, which includes only three on Goo. St Agnes is one of the smaller islands and is only about a mile wide. I managed to pick my way across the clipping sea by means of natural stepping stones. Here I'm looking back to St Agnes. Ingu is only 0.62 miles, that's one kilometre long, by 0.31 miles, that's 0.5 kilometres wide. The central stone of this stack has the name Gu very prettily painted on it. Both of these goo houses were built in the 1920s by Charles Hamlet Cooper, an industrial engineer. They have Scandinavian style roofs, which apparently make them more likely to withstand any wild and exposed weather. Looking north from the rough grass of goo, and you can see over to Porth Conga Quay. During the tourist season, St Mary's Boatman's Association run daily return trips to all of the off islands, weather and tides permitting. This heap of rocks conceals a burial cairn, and this one is known as Carn Bight. Cairns, taken from the Gaelic Carn, meaning a human made stack of stones raised for a purpose, sometimes have a burial cyst at their centre. A burial cyst is an ossuary, a small stone coffin used to hold the bodies of the dead. That first time I didn't linger on goo. I was wearing sandals, and although they were clumpy, they probably weren't suitable for trudging over rugged ground. Here I'm looking at the beautiful sunlit view south from the Tombolo. Back on St Agnes and here's Covey and Cottage Guest House and Cafe. They also operate as a takeaway pizzeria on some nights. Palm trees, some lucky person's roof and a beautiful blue sky. We only had one grotty day on the Isles of Scilly weatherwise in 2022 and this wasn't it. In 2023 however, the weather was changeable. How British of me to wax lyrical about the weather. I loved the decorative flip-flops outside of one of the routes into Pop Boys Gallery. They sell art in the form of paintings, sculpture and jewellery. 
I've never been inside Potboy's gallery, though. It's always been closed when I've ventured past. I just had to include a photo of St Agnes's post office stores. They're small, perfectly formed and contain all of your essentials. This is taken from my most recent filmography, which came out overexposed. I've heavily doctored it. These succulents are called Eoniums and they feature all over the Isles of Scilly. Beautiful flora and fauna abound here and these tropical red hot pokers are called Nifofia red hot popsicles. I saw them on more than one of the Salonian islands. Cows having a lie down and these must be part of Troy Town Farm. Everything is found on site. The cows graze here, are milked here and the resulting cream is used to make their ice creams. The Super Dean, rather disparagingly, refers to cows as my sisters. Isn't that charming? A traditional phone box and the first glimpse I got of St Agnes Lighthouse. It might seem a strange place to have a lighthouse as it's inland, but perhaps it's the island's highest point. It certainly looks it. It stands 22.5 metres above ground and 42 metres above mean high water. Built in 1680, the lighthouse is the oldest of the six silly lighthouses and is no longer operational. It has the unusual feature of gun ports in the structure of the tower, and the lantern part of the equation was fired firstly by coal and then by oil. In 1880, the optical equipment was upgraded and consisted of 14 reflective lamps arranged in two tiers, and the speed of rotation was doubled. But the lighthouse was always prone to fog perhaps due to its inland location, and was decommissioned in 1911. A stone snowman, stone reindeer, and what looks like a snow woman add an interesting touch to this field. Perhaps we should call them the Lighthouse family. Wasn't that a 90s band? Did the locals ever really want a lighthouse though? At one time shipwrecks were a vital additional income for coastal communities. The lighthouse now serves as a day mark for shipping and is privately owned living accommodation. This is a farm I passed and I just thought it looked colourful and a fun place in which to hold a mini festival. You can rent apartments on some of the farms and St Agnes is the only inhabited island without a hotel. The side of that farm had attractive and geometric hand-drawn pictures on the window. I just thought it looked cheerful. Another heavily played around with photograph taken during my last trip to the islands. I just wanted to include this because it's the old Coast Guard cottages, which also include a watchtower, which is slightly out of shot. Bishop Rock Lighthouse is visible over the water. It was completed in 1858 and is 49 metres, that's 161 feet, high. It is an impressive structure and is often referred to as King of the Lighthouses. Remember, don't forget to check out my blog. There is a complete St Agnes post on there. Troy Town Farm is the southernmost settlement on the United Kingdom. This moggy is probably more interested in the cream used to make the ice creams though. Remember, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and don't forget to click on the notification bell. If he's the farm pussycat, then he's the luckiest cat in the world. I sat a while and took a moment to enjoy the view, overlooking the campsite that sits on the lower ground here. Plenty of little fauna friends came to join me at my table. I've since learned that these abundant birds are called turnstones. Here we are eating our Troy Town ice creams. I went for an apple crumble flavour with a flake. It was very subtle. Dean went for a sorbet, fruits of the forest, and it tasted just like licking jam. They do a wide variety of ice creams and sorbets, and they're available all over the island. They really are delicious. That first time I walked around, but the track was waterlogged. As I was wearing sandals, I decided to walk back the way I'd come. And it can be viewed from here. It's an uninhabited island and is known for housing several species of bird, including puffins and storm petrels. You can also see the church tower on this photo. The strange inland formation on this photo includes a stone which resembles a chipped tooth. 
During our second visit, we went off in hunt of Troy Town Maze, a small labyrinth reputed to be dating from 1729 in this area. I didn't quite know what I was looking for though, and did wonder if this could be it. It was actually just a little bit further round, and I have to admit, I found it a tad underwhelming. It's reputed to have been laid down by either a lighthouse keeper or his son, but a much older maze was revealed in the 1980s following excavations on the site. This is St Agnes Church, and the current building dates back to the 19th century. It contains stained glass windows by local artists Marigold and Oriel Hicks. Macabre Little Moir just had to venture into the graveyard. The first church to be built here, between the 16th and 17th centuries, was destroyed by a storm. A second church was then built in the 18th century, but that was again destroyed. St Agnes Island Hall was once the Bible Christian Chapel and dates from 1874. It was extended in 2014. Its adjacent green space is used for outside events. The hall now incorporates workspace units, office space and community hall and exhibition areas. Honesty boxes like these abound all over the island, selling things such as plants, fruit and veg, homemade produce and second-hand goods. Some even have card readers. It's always better to take change though. I played around with these photos and thought they looked better in black and white. Here we are leaving this part of the island and I think this photo has an almost ghostly feel about it. You really could be anywhere in the middle of rural England, but if you look across through the hedge to the left, it's probably quite hard to believe that you can actually see the sea. Our walk back took us past the lighthouse again and the Christmas crew had been joined by a real Pinto horse. After I'd finished walking around St Agnes, the isthmus had widened, so I took another trek over to Goo. A stone stack in front of Goo, and stone stacking is actually quite difficult. You have to get the balance just right. Standing on the rugged beach of Goo, overlooking the quay, that first time my sandals, although thick-soled, were good for slipping off and paddling in, but possibly less good for rocky paths. So I decided to do exactly that and have a paddle. Don't be fooled by the prettiness of the water, the currents can be vicious. It was not an issue here, in this isolated pool, but I did manage to step right into quicksand next to it. I do advise proceeding with caution. The next few photos are taken following my visits to the Isles of Scilly in 2023 and this time I was wearing more suitable footwear. The tide was at its lowest and the tombolo was really wide. We hiked further across the centre of Goo as we were looking for the Old Man of Goo which is a Bronze Age veneer dating from the 15th to the 5th century BC. The day was windy and overcast but you could still make out St Mary's over the water. Side view, and this leaning veneer is 2.7 metres, that's 9 feet tall, and is the UK's most southerly standing stone. This area is littered with cairns and entrance graves from around the same era. The latter show evidence of both cremation, with the remains placed in pottery urns, and natural interment. Any valuables placed with the dead have long been stolen. Goo is covered in bracken and gorse. The latter can attack your legs if you're trudging through wearing shorts, which thankfully I wasn't. There is also an abundance of these little white flowers across the island. This really is a naturalist's paradise. That's naturalist, not naturist. I didn't see any nude people here. Our final impression of you as we began the walk downwards to the tombolo. Here you can see the Turk's head across the water. The Turk's Head is the most southwesterly pub in the British Isles, and I stopped to have a glass of cider and a bag of crisps before leaving. The little friends came to visit me again, and one tried to peck on my painted toenail. He may have thought it was some kind of berry. On the slipway in the afternoon sun, looking back over the pub, I'm waiting for the boat home. 
saying goodbye, and both St Agnes and Goo have fringes of various kinds of rocky outcrops, which look very volcanic. Remember, don't forget to check out my other Isles of Silly montages. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.